in this video, we'll learn what to do when we have binomials, or two terms inside a radical sign. Whenever you have two terms inside of a radical sign, you can only pull factors out of a radical. Remember that factors are separated by multiplication. This presents a problem because when you have plus or minus signs, or terms within a radical, you can't pull out factors unless you create a multiplication problem. If you have terms, that means they're separated by plus or minus signs, and it means we have to factor first. You can't pull terms out of a radical. You can only pull factors out of a radical. So if we look at the two terms inside the radical in example one, you'll see that there's a common factor of 4x to the second that is common between those two terms. We must remember to keep the radical intact, but we can rewrite this as a multiplication problem once we find what our common factors are. One hundred x squared divided by four x squared is twenty-five. 16x squared divided by 4, sorry, 16x to the fourth divided by 4x squared is 4x squared. Notice that at this point we now have multiplication instead of addition or subtraction. And we can now take out the pieces of the inside the square root that we need. Remember, 4 is the same as 2 squared, and we can leave the x squared there, times 25 minus 4x squared. Again, we can ask ourselves how many times 2, or the index, will go into the exponent. In this case, 2 will go into 2 one time, so we can pull out 2 to the first power. Again, with the x, we ask ourselves how many times the index will go into the exponent, and in this case, 2 will go into 2 one time. With a remainder of 0 each time. So the only thing that's left inside the radical is the 25 minus 4x squared. My final answer is 2x times the square root of 25 minus 4x squared. In example two, we must do the same thing again. We look at the two terms within the cubed root and ask ourselves, what's the common factors? In this case, 27x to the sixth is the common factor. What's left in parentheses is the part that was left over when we divide by 27x to the sixth. 216 divided by 27 is 8. And 
27x to the 9th divided by 27x to the 6th is x to the 3rd. This is what's left over. Once again, remember that there's multiplication occurring now, and we can, f we can take out the correct pieces out of our cubed root. 27 is the same as 3 to the 3rd. So let's go ahead and rewrite this whole cubed root. Three to the third, looking at the index, we see that the th it's a three, and so we divide the exponent by the index to get three to the first to come out. Moving on to the x base, we see that the x has an exponent of six. Divide that by three, and we get x to the second that comes out. The rest is in parentheses in its terms, so we leave that alone. So the remainder is 8 minus x to the third. And that's the simplification of the cubed root of 216x to the sixth minus 27x to the ninth.